We've all heard it. Wishlists are literally the most important metric when you have a Steam game that you are promoting. There's no getting away from it. You need to get wishlists. Why? Well, because it indicates to you how well your game will perform. But it also indicates to Steam whether your game has any merit in terms of community and sales potential. If you want to have your game featured and pushed by Steam, you need wishlists. Now, no one knows exactly what the magical wishlist number is, but there's a lot of speculation. Some say 4,000, most say 7,000, and I've even heard 40,000. Let's hope that's false, because damn. Basically, wishlists are valuable because they provide an insight into how you can expect your game to sell. If your game has, say, 2,000 wishlists and your conversion rate comes to about 20%, which is pretty good, you can expect to make 200 sales at launch, more or less. This is more or less how these metrics are explained. So if your game is $10 at launch, then you'll make more or less $4,000 with 2,000 wishlists, before deductions that is. So that's your gross income. Of that money, you'll see about $2,500. As a very rough example, don't hold me to that. So the short of it is, wishlists are important. I recently crossed the 5,000 wishlist threshold for the first time in my indie career. None of my other indie games have reached that amount, so naturally I'm pretty excited. My previous best was around half of what, what this game has, around 2,500. By my own metrics, which are about a 13% conversion rate, I should make about $10,000. That's if I released the game now because naturally I will gather more wishlists. I thought to myself, well, if I can do it, then other indies can do it too. So here's how I did it and how you can replicate it with your game. Here are the steps that I took in order of effectiveness. Number one, participation in Steam festivals. This is by far the biggest factor in getting Steam wishlists. These festivals capture thousands of players looking at demos and new games to check out. For my game, I got around 2,000 wishlists from just the one next fest that my game was in. It helped massively, and as it was right at the start of the Steam page being live for my game, it gave me a great platform to build wishlists on. Apart from just the next fests, Steam also hosts many other such festivals such as FPS fests or other thematical festivals. I would recommend participating in as many of these as you possibly can. They are a wishlist gold mine. Assuming, of course, your game is halfway good. Number two, have a great Steam page and a good game. If you have a really good game with a really good Steam page, it will get some eyes on it just naturally. If you have a really bad game with a terrible Steam page, almost no one will see it. These factors are, of course, obvious. However, an outlier exists. If you have a good game, but not great, but you have a fantastic Steam page, you'll still get a lot of wishlists. This is a little bit of a loophole. Having a Steam page that stands out can really help you in the long run and will attract way more eyes than a bland one that isn't all that fun to look at. At some point in the future, I'll make a tutorial on how to make a really good Steam page. But for now, just do these few things to ensure a successful metric return on your Steam page. Have really good descriptions, but don't make them too long. For the main description, capture the mood and the style of the game without forcing lore or unnecessary detail. The key art is key. Pay someone to make professional grade images. You won't regret that. Lastly, I always say to people to include GIFs in their Steam page. This really captures a lot more attention than standalone images, for obvious reasons. So in short, make your Steam page the best that it can be. It's the entry point to your game and the first thing that people see. Number three, do early access or have a demo. 
This is a personal opinion, but it has helped me immensely. Putting your game on Steam early and then raising the price gradually with each update is a good way to gauge feedback and get the ball rolling on community and opinions. The thing is, if you don't have something for people to play, they can't really be all that interested. There are just too many games fighting for the same attention nowadays. If putting your game up in early access doesn't work for you for whatever reason, I would recommend putting up a demo instead. My game Operator 8 has 20,000 demo downloads, so I have to assume a good chunk of my wish lists are from those that have played the demo. That's a lot of people. Number four, be responsive to your community. When you get community asking questions or leaving suggestions, be sure to be fast and effective with your replies. You'll get a lot of people that want to force their opinion onto your projects. Find a way to say no without being affrontive if the suggestions aren't what you have planned anyway. Remember, it's your game and you have to choose what's best for it. No one else can. You can still be open to feedback, but it doesn't have to define your actions. You can respond to and talk to fans and players on many platforms, social media and otherwise, but to my experience, the Steam community tab on your game will have the best feedback. Number five. Use Steam tags that actually make sense. Finally, Steam tags. Never underestimate the importance of Steam tags. If you are making a first person shooter where you kill zombies but your game is tagged as a family friendly racing game, you won't find the right audience at all. This is just a silly example, but it's actually a much bigger deal than you might think and something that actually quite a lot of indies get wrong. A big chunk of my wish lists have come in due to me having tagged my game the correct way. You want your game to show up in the recommended games along games that are your rivals and your peers, not random games in another genre. You won't attract the right people that way. You might get views, but those people won't be interested. For example, my game Operator 8 will show up alongside AAA games like Doom Eternal and Dead Space, but it will also show up in games like Ultra Kill and Lethal Company. This is right where I want it and will bring in a stream of eyes that are actually looking to buy that type of game. This is vital. You have to find the right people to make fans and players of. So there you have it, my top ways of securing wishlists and getting your game on the road to 5,000 or more wishlists. It's not an easy or simple thing to amass that number of followers for any project, never mind an indie game. It will take hard work and determination, but if you follow my steps, you'll get there, just as I did. You just need patience. Assuming, of course, that your game is halfway good. This is also pretty important. Thank you for watching and following along. If you have any questions, please drop them down below and I'll definitely send you a response. Like and subscribe for more as we traverse and try to survive this indie dream together. Until next time, keep wishing.